Okay, sorry about that. That was uh, absolutely stupid of me not to uh, I put my phone off. <laughs> right, so I was saying, um, yeah, on the motorway, mm -hmm. make good progress. Okay. But remember to keep that only a full brakes, two second rule two gap second between level. you and that car in front here. Okay. Yeah. So, overtaking on the motorway, it's the interior mirror, mm -hmm. the right hand mirror, okay. signal, yeah. and then recheck the two mirrors again. And if the picture hasn't changed, and because you're on a, uh, a road that's got more than two lanes, just do what we call kiss the parrot, which is moving your chin to your shoulder. Okay. Don't do a f don't do a blind spot check. Yeah. Okay. What just we mean by don't do a blind spot check is don't don't look right over your shoulder because that's dangerous. Yeah. Okay. Just like that. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, all you're doing is just making sure that nobody's come from the far right lane and might be moving back into the lane that you're just moving out okay, to. Yeah. yeah. And then once you've moved out, cancel the indicator. Mm -hmm. And then once you know you've cleared the vehicle that you want to pass, and you can see the left-hand lane is cleared to do 70 mile an hour. Okay. Uh, follow the same procedure again. Okay. So it's going to be the interior mirror, mm -hmm. the left-hand door mirror, indicate, okay. and repeat the two mirrors two again. Mirrors yeah? yeah? Any questions on that? No. Right, well, I've run through the town, and we'll make our way down and find somewhere to do the emergency stop and the turn of the road, yeah? Okay. All right? And you've got a nice little tight gap to get out of here. <laughs> if you look in that shop window on your left there, mm -hmm. you can actually see yeah, the, gap. the rear end of the car, yeah? yeah? Obviously, I'm not saying stare in the shop window because you want to be yeah. looking behind you, yeah. but you can just use that as a guide as well, yeah? Okay. So the one place that was really important to check there, mm -hmm. that was a typical van driver's pull away. I know you used to drive vans. You should have looked between the headrest and the door pillar, which is called the blind spot, yeah? Okay, yeah. And we're gonna turn right. So what kind of a street is this then? Sorry? What kind of a street is this? It's one way, isn't it? Yeah. That was good use of the mirror, well done. So just before we stopped, we just could have slipped into that one. Okay. Yeah? Because those lights would have changed back again, just as you were fiddling with the handbrake, you would have been left behind, yeah? Yeah. And that would have been marked uh, on the hesitancy on the test, yeah? From traffic light, do I need to check my blind spot or? No. no. Um, just a quick glance at the two door mirrors. I'm going straight. Yeah. yeah. So the danger ahead here could be these pedestrians on your right. Yeah. yeah. What would you do if one of them stepped off the pavement and started across the road? Break. And we're going to turn right, please. So which mirror should you have checked there before indicating? 
Oh, just a bit further. Oh, okay. So which mirror should you have checked? Interior and right. Yeah. And why are we checking the uh, interior mirror first? Uh, because um, for a good look. And we're going to turn left. Yeah, we're checking the interior mirror to see the, the distance of the vehicle behind you. And we're checking the right hand mirror to see if anybody's overtaking you. Okay. And if there was somebody overtaking you, what would you do? Just make my bike slow down. Just let them go? Let them go, yeah. What's the consequence of not letting them go? Uh, if there's any danger. Yeah, you could actually force them into uh, an oncoming uh, 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 car, couldn't you? Yeah. Nice bit of tires and tarmac there. No. So if you have a look in the mirror behind you now, you'll see the car behind is done exactly the same. So, so you you really are the meat in the sandwich here, aren't you? Yeah. 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 You will. You will get used to that, but you got you, you got to think and plan ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Just imagine if that car broke down. Burst into flames. Yeah, I can't get. Or if they jumped out of the car with baseball bats, yeah? Yeah. We're stuffed, aren't we? Yeah. We'd have to lock the doors and get a car smashed to pieces, yeah? Yeah. So just talk me through what you see ahead at the moment. A uh, busy road. Yeah, talk me through what else you see. Road signs give you some information. What what do the road signs tell you is coming up? A uh, red light in front of me. What yeah. kind of a light is that then? It's a pedestrian. Right. And you know what kind of crossing it is? Uh, roundabout. Yeah, do you know what type of uh, pedestrian crossing that is? It's 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 called a puffin. Puffin. If you have a look at the boxes on the side, mm -hmm. it's the new type boxes, and see the cameras on top. Yeah. So if if somebody's pressed a button, just around the button there's a red light. That red light will come on. Yeah. And the idea of the cameras on top is that if somebody is crossing, as soon as they're clear, the cameras will automatically switch the lights back. Okay. So. You'll notice now these lights are exactly the same sequence as normal traffic lights. You won't get a flashing amber like you do at a Pelican Crossing. Oh, okay. It'll go red amber and then green again. So just watch that pedestrian there as he presses that button. Yeah. Watch him. See, see the way the red light came on? Yeah, on the, on the bottom, yeah. Yeah, so that, that'll that help you um, uh, to establish as you come up to these lights whether they're going to change or not. Okay. Because somebody could have pressed that button and walked away. So now, it's very important we don't actually stop off no? the white line, yeah? Okay. And we don't stop within the studded area of the crossing. And we're going to turn right. What's the consequences of actually stopping uh, over the white line on the crossing? It's dangerous. In what way? Uh, they got a mark on it. Uh, I'll let you deal with this first. Okay. Yeah, if you think about a blind person crossing, yeah. and you're sitting there blocking the crossing, okay, yeah. they're probably going to end up walking into the car, aren't they? Yeah. yeah? And from a legal point of view, if you got caught by the police over the over the uh, over the line, stopped on the crossing, you could be looking at three points in your license, yeah? Oh, I didn't know that. Three points. So if it's suddenly red light comes, so what should I do? 
Well, if you're on the white line or over it, uh -huh. you carry on, yeah? Okay, so I don't have to stop then. Well, I'll the red light won't come first. Uh, an amber light would come first, wouldn't it? Yeah. And what does an amber light mean? I'm uh, ready to... prepared to go. Now, the amber light after the green, what does that mean? That means it's changing to red light. Yeah, what does it mean to you as a, as a motorist? What, what must you do? Um, I'll just... Well, think back to your theory to what the highway code says you should do. You Wait. Must, you must stop, wouldn't you? Yeah. You must stop unless you're on the white line, line. or over it. Okay. Or the vehicle behind you is so close that if you were to stop, you got, you'd cause an accident, yeah? Yeah. But obviously, if you approach at the right speed, yeah. and there is a vehicle very close behind you, then that speed needs to come down a little bit. So if they do change, you can stop without getting shunted up the back side, yeah? straight on unless otherwise directed, yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's way too early for first gear, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. About a car's length from the white line. I think what you got distracted there with was actually thinking about where you were going. Okay. So remember, if, I, if I'm going to ask you to turn, I'll give you plenty of warning, yeah? Okay. If you think back to when you passed your driving test, it's exactly the same procedure. Straight on, unless otherwise directed. Okay. But can I ask them, like, is there any problem if I ask them, am I going straight? Or? Yeah, on the independent drive, which which lasts 10 minutes, um, there's no harm asking them to uh, repeat the instructions if you've forgotten them. Okay. Ask them in good time, so they've got time to actually tell you before you actually get to the situation. Okay. And even if you go wrong on the on the independent drive, mm -hmm. providing you don't commit a driver error, then it doesn't matter. Okay, I can go in. Uh, the, uh, the examiner will get you back onto the route, yeah? Right, okay. But they prefer you to ask rather than go the wrong way, because then it means they have to kind of plan, plan to get you back onto the okay. same route again, yeah? But there's no reason to panic if you do go the wrong way, providing you don't um, commit a driver error doing it, yeah? yeah? But being a van driver, you should be well used to following road signs, shouldn't you? Yeah, but it's different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because in van driving, when you do delivery and stuff, you, you need to use the old quick, sat -nav. Yeah. Sat -nav and, uh, have to follow the rules. And we're going to take the next turning to the left, please. So what mirror should you check just before indicating? Interior one. And uh, my left. And did you check the left one before indicating? No. So why are we checking the left one before we indicate? It's no danger. Um, like what? Like any... Who's likely to come up the inside here? Bicycles. Yeah. So once that indicator goes on, if there was a cyclist there... Yeah. You, you could well frighten the life out of him. And he might end up falling off because he sees your indicator coming on, yeah? Yeah. So you're checking... It's very important to check before it's called mirrors signal manoeuvre, yeah? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to take the next turning to the right. So just talk me through what mirrors you're going to check here. Uh, my entry yeah. one and my right handle. Good. And what are you checking the right one for? Uh, is there 
someone overtaking me. Yeah. And if there was somebody overtaking you, what would you do? I'll just stop my car and like let them go. And what's the consequences of not letting them go? If uh, if I see any danger. Well, the consequence of not letting them go, if it had been in that situation there, is that if they tried to overtake you, they would have gone straight into that blue car, Citroen yeah, there? Yeah. And we're going to take the next turning to the right. Just talk me through your mirrors again. Uh, I'm checking my interior yeah. mirror and my right hand side mirror. And check. I'm checking my right hand side mirror, is yeah. there any car overtaking me? And then we're just going to find a safe, legal and convenient stopping place on the left. So we can find somewhere where we're not blocking the drop down curb or we're not parked opposite a parked car. Checking my interior and left side mirror. That'll do fine there for a minute. So you're actually indicating to stop there, yeah? Yeah. Who are you indicating to? No one. Yeah. So we indicate to stop on the left if there's anybody behind us. Okay. Anybody coming towards us that's going to benefit from that signal, and that could be a pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if the pedestrian's walking away from you, they're not going to see the signal. But if they're walking towards you, they may well want to turn and cross the road, yeah? Oh, yeah. In the same way when we're, when we're actually moving away from the curb, yeah? We only indicate if there's anybody ahead of you that's going to benefit. Okay. So we don't indicate if there's a vehicle coming up behind us, because we're not going to pull out in front of that vehicle. Okay. So if any bike was behind me, I should indicate. If any, if any, what was behind you? Bike or like any car? No, you wouldn't indicate. No. Because you're not going to pull out in front of that vehicle, eh? No. So therefore, if you were to indicate and you've got a vehicle coming up behind you, that might force that vehicle into thinking, oh, this bloke's, I mean, this white car is going to pull out in front of me, mm -hmm. and he may well slow down and let you out, yeah? Okay. Where if you hadn't have indicated in the first place, he wouldn't have done that, would he? No. Yeah? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah. In the same way, if we're going around, moving in and around parked vehicles, yeah. would you indicate? If I see any, yeah, if I see any car in front of me, I'll indicate. So no, I'll we won't. What we do is we use uh, the position of your vehicle is the strongest form of signal. Yeah. So if you're going around a parked car ahead, yeah, you would do your usual mirror checks on approach. Okay. And just hold your position out very slightly. So if there is a vehicle behind you, it knows you're not actually pulling up the park by the curb. Okay. And when it's clear, then. And again, just recheck the mirrors, move around the car, mm -hmm. and then once you get around the car, just check the interior mirror and the left hand door mirror to make sure the vehicle hasn't moved away okay. and then move back in again. So, if as an example, like another car is coming in front of me, yeah, and the car is just in front of my car, so yeah. I had to stop, put in my first gear, so I stopped my car. When the road is clear, I can do I need to indicate no. and go or just no. go? No, just obviously. Go. Obviously, your position is very important, very important yeah? yeah. Um, hold back at a, a reasonable distance, mm -hmm. yeah? If you use the tyre and tarmac rule, it's not a bad idea, yeah? And don't go in tight to the pavement. All oh, right, okay, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. just hold your position out as near to the centre line as centre you can without line. causing inconvenience. Okay. And that way, the car behind will know that you're not parking, okay. yeah? Okay. But by putting an indicator on, it could actually mean that you're going to turn into that driveway. Uh, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, so it can be misleading. So it's a fault. Yeah, it's so. it's something that everything you're learning today is something that you're going to be teaching me from this seat. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. So everything that you learn to pass your part two is what you're going to be passing on to your students okay. for them to pass their driving test. Okay. Yeah? yeah. And it's what you're going to be passing on to me. When, when we start training later on. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. I'm just going to pause this a second just so it doesn't go over half an hour. Yeah.